Noyeft is here at Tribeca 2021 with In Deeds and Lena Waithe's Rising Voices, bringing inclusivity and more voices to the rainbow of the world that is cinema. Hi, thank you for You're talking welcome. to Noyeft. Why don't you tell our members your name and the name of your movie? Sure, it's Dre Ryan and it's Cinephile. So my name is Elise Junior St. Pru, and the name of my movie is Enrico and Adagio. Hello, I'm Gabriela Ortega and I'm the writer-director of Huella, which means footprint. My name is David Fortune and I'm the writer-director of Shoebox. Hi, my name is Stacy Pascal Gaspard and my movie is called Sonia Dora. My name is Bomay Luma and my film is called Comfort. My name is So Young Shalio and the title of my film is Soft Sounds Appealing Fruit. My my name is Quincy Gosfield. I'm DeAndre Gosfield. The name of our movie is Flames. And what can you tell us about your movie? I'd say it's um, it takes a look at female desire through the female gaze. I don't know anyone that shouldn't be interested in that. My movie is a movie about generational curses and women and the cycles of women, particularly in Latino families. Um, my film is about uh, mother's love and Korean pairs. And what, well, we all love our mothers, God willing, God bless. It is about a young flamenco dancer who's very disenchanted with her life, who loses her grandmother, and the moment she does, it unleashes a generational curse that she finally has to face with. And with that, she faces herself and her ambitions. Fantastic. We're all about uh, generational curses in Italian culture. Unfortunately, I think we can all relate to that. Um, what specific? <laughs> Big families. Lots of food, just different spices, right? I can't speak of all Korean mothers, but my mom sometimes gave me a lot of tough love. So just learning to appreciate that behind all her sometimes harsh criticism, there's love behind everything. I think every mother out there just found their new favorite filmmaker. Um, so my film is about a young black Korean immigrant mother who is trying to make ends meet out of Fabric Factory, and she finds a release through her abandoned dream of dance. Yes, so Shoebox is about a boy who works at a barbershop, and he uses the money to pay respect to his mother who passed away. After an ice raid, a Nigerian immigrant father has to tell his son why his mother is not coming home. And so it explores intimacy, love, and compassion in the black community that we often don't see throughout the media and storytelling. A lot of people don't know this, but the Nigerian community actually deals a lot with deportations and um, it's a big issue in our community um, and we wanted to make an intimate piece where an audience can really empathize with the family as opposed to it being a politicized issue it's more of a character like type study. So this movie is about a young boy who lives on a deserted farm with his still father and is preparing for an audition for his lifetime in a musical territory. You know, but at the same time, he's dealing with a newfound skill and ancestral dreaming. Flames explores male intimacy, this, this taboo subject that men can't be deep in person, interpersonal with each other. And we kind of explore the reasons why that is and how we kind of have to navigate ourselves with society so that we kind of stay to this, you know, the acceptable norm of what men are supposed to be. I wanted to give more people a viewpoint on what it feels like to grow up in a classical setting for music-wise, a jazzy and classical setting how it's basically how we prepare for you know and when we get there what it looks like that's so different than how we grew up especially in america and then since you guys are the italian american um I, I remember when i went to visit italy how i often saw men walking down the street holding hands that was amazing and coming from the united states i didn't quite know how to interpret what it was but they were friends and it was just just it was natural but here it's different, you know. I'm, I'm actually, I'm very glad you brought that up because you're right. Something that I think a lot of non-Italians see, they're surprised about in Italy, is how, you know, we, we all, we talk with our hands. It's another language. We're touchy-feely. And how that is simply just, it's, it's its own masculine form of expression. Me and my dad is like best friends. We're like really close. And you'll see a story. This story is a father and son story. It's on family. Why is it, why are our like sons afraid to be too close to their fathers or vice versa or why are you too afraid to be close to your uncle or your brother and when you know and, and best friends you know if, you, if you're a little too chummy it, it starts to become weird and why is that it doesn't have to always be a sex thing it's it's like but we all long for it that's the thing men long for intimacy right. with we, we, we can go to the movie together but we're not going to sit right next to each other right that that nonsense we're going to put a seat in between each other I'm with Chris Hyam, CEO of Indeed. I'm Constanza Castro, I'm executive producer uh, on the side of 271 Films. 
I'm Dominica Castro, I am an executive producer on 271 Films. I'm Natasha Wellesley and I'm the executive producer at Venturelands and we were one of the executive producing partners. Could you tell us a little bit about your intentions for Rising Voices? Yeah, so the idea was very simple. We would easily spend a million dollars on a TV ad. Instead of spending that million dollars on a single ad, what if we took that million dollars and invested it in 10 BIPOC filmmakers to bring their own experience and their own stories to the meaning of a job in someone's life? Our belief at Indeed is that talent is universal, opportunity is not, and what we're trying to do is create an opportunity for more people, and I think what you're going to see on the screen today is what opportunity can do. This program gave opportunity, I think, to like over 550 BIPOC filmmakers who worked on these films, actors, uh, behind, you know, behind the scenes. I think the most inspirational thing is everyone being so collaborative and like the just uh, inspiring each other and do it with so much conviction and drive and vision and power. What jumped out at you as the most exciting or the most beneficial of being part of Rising Voices? Well, I mean, it's in the name itself, Rising Voices. It's like we had a program that pushed our voices and our narratives that we wanted to say and want to get out there to the world. So Rising Voices really didn't just give us money and just say, go do your thing, but they empowered us to tell empowering stories about our community that I feel like needs to be told, you know? To be able to give that platform an opportunity just to make a Nigerian immigrant film, uh, it's, I, I've never seen one before. Like, i never seen our names being like, like, my main character name is Chidi, we have Uche, we have Gideon, like we have these names that you don't ever hear in film. We, you see our food, like our fufu, all that stuff, you don't ever see that in film, so. Yeah, I think just having the opportunity to make a film as personal as mine, having enough funding to um, have my friends take part in such a project, everything has been incredible. I mean, honestly, soup to nuts, it's just been such a dream, it was such a pleasure to work on the film and to work with all the collaborators and um, everyone who helped contribute to making this happen for all of us. I always tell people, if I don't let people know I'm playing the game, how can they pick me, you know? So I think with Rising Voices, it's for sure letting people know, hey, Stacy's playing the game and she's ready to play. Every one of our stories, it's from us. It's something we either experienced, something we dreamed, something we've seen our family go through, you know, we're telling these stories through a direct lens. It, it, it's really exquisite to be able to tell these stories directly to an audience who don't see these everyday stories, you know, um, and hopefully you can see more of them. Absolutely. Personal stories through personal filmmakers of ever-expanding voices. Congratulations. Thank you for speaking with us.